Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch, it say it's time to get it. Yeah, talking about my guy this every day. Hey, hey, what's up, people? How's it going? It's Alonzo, Zoe Vince, back with our more soul ministry. This is uh, Soul Service, a YouTube channel. And uh, hey, just welcome back, man. But we uh, we go through the word of God and uh, dig out those lessons, dig out those precepts, and apply them to our life. That's the most important part. It's not just hearing the word of God, but figuring out, seeking the most high God, taking counsel and learning to apply his words so we can change our lives, man, and be that example that we're supposed to be. So today we're in Matthew, we're in chapter 24, and we're gonna go, we're gonna start at verse 15. We're gonna try to get through the rest of the chapter, um, but we'll see if we make it through. Right. Heavenly Father, your name is holy, and may your will be done. Be with us as we study your word, as we discuss or talk, I teach from your word, Father. May your spirit speak expressly. Use me as your vessel. Remove any of me, Father, and replace it with all of you. May your people hear your voice, your precepts, hear your warnings. May they apply to their life. And may they get ready and stay ready. Be with your children, Father. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so as I said, we in uh, Matthew, we in chapter 24, and we in verses 15, and we're going to see how far we get. Um, Yahushua was still talking to his disciples. They asked him for a sign at the end of the times, and we went through verse 1 through 14. Now, we pick up at 15, and Jesus is giving more examples. So we're going to read through. Um, so verse 15 when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which be on the housetop not come down and take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and warn to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days who nurse and young. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, nor neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall there shall be great tribulation, such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever will, nor ever shall be. All right, so check this out. Yahashua was saying, once the abomination of desolation, once you see the abomination of desolation set up in a holy place, like Daniel the prophet spoke of, way back in the book of Daniel, y'all, we talking about a long time before Yahashua was even on the scene. He's talking about the same sign that Yah that Daniel spoke of, which was the abomination of desolation that gets set up. Now, all right, I'm going to just touch on this. Um, remember, Yahashua says no one knows the day or the time. Daniel talked about the abomination of desolation. If you look into these things, you'll see that a lot of people and rightfully so, have been trying to figure out what they were talking about, right? So there's some thought as to what the abomination of desolation actually was. Um, my personal opinion is don't get too caught up on it. And the reason is because it'll, it'll be misleading. Here's why I think it'll be misleading. His, this is how I was misled, right? And I say misled, maybe a personal mistake, whatever. So look, check this out. You look into it, you're trying to figure out what it is. So you're reading up, you're studying, you're researching. But what you're researching isn't scripture, right? What you're researching is someone else's interpretation or opinion or what scripture is and what happened in history. They're trying to, they're trying to tie the things together to figure out what it actually was. So you even got people that say, well, there's a, an immediate fulfillment of prophecy and then there's a long-term fulfillment of prophecy, basically, that what Daniel was talking about was going to happen multiple times. Well, that's misleading because Yahashua was talking about the end of times. He's not talking about <laughs> the fall of Judah and Jerusalem. He's not talking about anything but the end of times when he returns, right? That's what he's talking about. So when you read that, it sounds good because it makes sense, but it's not scripturally sound, right? So we got to recognize for one, Yahashua was talking about the end of times, the end of the world when he returns. And that's it. All right. So exactly what the 
abomination of desolation is, I can't tell you. I don't know, right? And if you're gifted and you truly know, like the most high God has revealed it to you, please tell me <laughs> what it might be, you know? Because I want to know. I do want to know, but I'm not fitting to go seek all these other different sources and all this other stuff and depend on other people other than the most high God to tell me what it is, if that makes sense. When he tells you or when you see it, you'll know. That's how my life experience has been. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come off that. So he's saying, when you see that, now check what he tells him to do. He say, if you're on the housetop, don't come down, right? If you out, if you if you gone, don't return trying to get your clothes, right? Whatever you're doing, when you see this thing, follow his instructions, right? And don't think about your clothes, your house, you know, this or that. He said, forsake, leave all that stuff behind, right? Which is important because, okay, how often are we willing to do that and not walk in Christ alone, right? How often are we willing to do that in life, period? Sacrifice. We talk about sacrifice. Um, and most people will speak of it as if, as if we know what it is or if if we actually practice sacrifice but the real deal is completely forsaking it right he said if you're on a housetop don't come back down if you're going don't take your cloak look it reminds me of sodom and gomorrah where lot his family and his wife was allowed to to leave right and the instruction they got was don't look back don't look back if you look back you're gonna turn into a pillar of salt right lot's wife couldn't resist looking back what what um what peace of mind what solace what do you get out of looking backwards see now look this and this according this is a blanket statement across life right you've been in relationships that went sour you've had habits that were poor you've worked jobs that you left you've accomplished things that were in the past right whether you played sports or whatever in the past how often are we looking back talking about what we did 10 15 20 30 years ago five years ago three years ago right how often are we trying to gloat talking about what we used to be um talking about what we used to have none of that matters like what what matters is where you are in your life right now in accordance with the most high god right we're not, we got to be able to forsake all that stuff in the past. And Yahashi was talking about an immediate transition, an immediate transition. When you see this, do this. Don't come down off the housetop. Don't worry about going back to get your clothes. He say right now, this is what you do. You shift immediately, right? I would say practice that ability. Because what if it happened right now? What if it happened on our watch while we were here? What could you do, right? We got to be ready. Stay ready and you ain't got to get ready, okay? So he's talking about a, a, uh, a really powerful trait, characteristic, ability, whatever you want to call it, to be able to do or have. But it's important to be able to do because it'll move you past all that trash, all that crap in your past, all right? So where did, where did we leave off? Um, verse 21, we read that. All right, so for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect sake, the chosen one's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So these people are going to be deceiving the, even the chosen ones. They, he said, if it were possible, they would be deceiving even the chosen ones. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will his eagles be gathered together. So again, as we're hearing, or if we're going about our day-to-day, -day, whatever the case is, and somebody's like, hey, look, Christ is here, Christ is there. Again, I told you on the last one that 
I was invited to take a listen to this guy. I take a listen and I hear what he's saying. I'm like, oh no, nah, this ain't it, right? Why? Because you gotta be armed up in scripture and understand that when he comes back, as lightning shines from the east to the west, we're going to know. We're going to see it. And he said, all tribes shall mourn. They ain't going to be excited to see him. He ain't coming back this time as uh, as the lamb, if you will. He's coming back as the lion of Judah, right? More so to separate. As he said, separate fathers from mothers, daughters from sons, you know? He ain't playing, y'all. So he said, when he come back, everybody is going to see this thing. Everybody is going to know. Right. So if you somebody's saying he's in a secret place, he's in this in a desert place, don't believe it. Don't believe the hype, <laughs> as, as, as they say. Right. You got to worry about that kind of thing. He, then he said, for wherever, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Also, eagles are birds of prey. Um, we think of is not literally the eagle is in language um, as in English because eagles hunt. Right. Um, it. It may have been talking about an eagle. It could be talking about a vulture. It's not real clear from the Hebrew translation, excuse me, from the Greek translation to the English. But what that remind makes me think of is um, people who are misled by these people who are false Christ, right? Okay. Now, if somebody is lying, just like we said before, then that's the spirit of the devil. So somebody's saying, hey, look, this is Christ, right? I'm Christ. He's in the secret place or whatever the case is. That's a lot. That's deceptive. That's the spirit of the devil. The spirit of the devil, right? Sin leads to death. Okay. He's talking about a carcass. Okay. So the people who are misled by this spirit of the devil led to this carcass to death. Right. He said the eagles would be there also. The birds of prey would be there also feeding off the carcasses. That's what vultures do. They feed off death in the carcasses. These people will be victimized. All right. It's a really explicit way. That's how I see this 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 passage coming to life. Right. These people will be victimized how they'll be victimized. I don't know. But we've seen mass deaths. We've seen mass mass suicides, um, people being monetarily taken advantage of. Taking their money, taking their possessions. We've seen all this stuff. These people will be victimized. That's happened in the past. Don't fall into that same snare. Right. I don't think I need to spend a lot of time there. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. I would just say take time to imagine those things happening, right? The sun not giving light and the powers of heaven shaken, right? The stars falling from heaven. We're talking about very significant things that can't be missed. Like you can't be, unless you just, I don't know. You can't miss that. OK, but just imagine those types of things happening. We haven't seen all those things happening. Right. Not quite yet. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Again, right after those things happening, he said, the son of man is returning. I'm coming back and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect, his chosen ones from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now he's going right back to his parable about the angels being the reapers, right? When he comes back, then you're going to hear the angels with the trumpets. We we read about that in Revelation. And he said, after that, the angels are going to come and gather his elects, the chosen ones, as reapers, right? From the four winds, from all corners of the earth. And then he said, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, he know, ye know that summer is not. So when you see a fig tree, right, and you see the uh, branches tender and you see leaves on a fig tree, you know that summer is near. OK, so likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. So he's telling you how to tell what season it is, how to see what season it is. When this season comes, the same way you're going to see the powers of the earth shaking, the stars from heaven falling, the sun not giving his light, false prophets, false Christ arising. He said, that's how you know that this season is near. The same way you can look at a fig tree and say the branch is tender, it's putting off leaves. Summer is close because figs get ripe or they bear fruit in summer. All right. So this, these passages are going to bear fruit, 
right? Once these, when you see these things happening, that's what season it is. He's giving, he's he's dumbing it down for us, y'all. <laughs> that long story short. So likewise, ye, when you see all these things, know that that is it is even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all those things be fulfilled. Now, generation um, can be tricky in the in the translation, right? Basically, it, basically it means an age or a period of time. He's already told us that no one knows the time nor the day. So we look at these words and we're trying to figure out when is he coming back? And that's a misnomer. That's a, you're misleading yourself, right? So if, if that's you, if you've done that, or if you're reading an interpretation or if you're reading someone else, whatever, and it's telling, given an estimate, hey, this might be the time, this, turn it off, close it down, delete it. That's not the most high God, okay? He already said, no one knows the day nor the hour, save for the most high God. Yahashua will say he don't know, the angels don't know, nobody knows. So what is a generation? It's a period of time. He said, this generation shall not end. So what that tells me, we're still here, so we're still in that generation. That's all I'm, that's the only assumption I'm gonna make, right? Now how the Lord figures generations and that sort of thing, I'm staying, I'm sta I'm I'm not subscribing to that channel, y'all. I'm not subscribing to that school of thought. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the message that we need to stay ready. That's what really matters. All right. He said, Heaven and earth shall not pass, but my word, heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass away. But on that day and hour knoweth no man, not no not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah ended into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took, took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man come, Son of Man cometh. Alright, so he's, again, making it plain. You don't know what time, you don't know the hour. So you got to stay ready. You got to stay on your job. You got to stay on post. Okay. Because if you knew what time, just like you say, the watch, if the watchman knew what thief, what hour the thief would have come, he would have been there. He would have watched just like us. We would have been out partying, doing our thing, you know, oh man, Jesus finna come back. Let me go to my crib and get in my prayer closet. <laughs> you know, we don't have that luxury. So we got to stay, we got to stay ready. Peoples, we got to be found doing what we're supposed to be doing and again just like you said in the judgment how, however you're found that's how you're going to be judged and that's alarming we're not talking about him looking be like I, yeah i know i found you and saying I, I found you adult in adultery i found you right when you was finna commit you i found you in murder i found you in this i found you in that but i remember all the stuff you did so i'm gonna just wipe not what he say people it's not what he say and that's scary you know that's scary that's alarming to me again that's a even more of an incentive to say you stay ready stay ready so you ain't got to get ready right so pursue the most high god and figure out what is my post what am i supposed to be doing all right therefore this is verse 44 be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give him meat in due season, give him food in his due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants to strike him and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of the servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him, if, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing the teeth. He's telling us right there, right? Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Don't get caught up in this, in this, in this, 
And I, I didn't hear people say, hey, well, when is he coming? You know, he ain't came yet. You know, I've had people that are non-believers saying stuff like that. Don't get caught up in that kind of trash, man. Stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready because you say, however you are found, right? If you're found being that faithful servant, that wise and faithful servant, he say you will be blessed. But if not, you're going to be allotted your portion with the hypocrites. And he said, they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to be weeping and I don't want to be gnashing my teeth. I do that enough in my sleep. <laughs> you know, we got to stay ready, peoples. We got to be ready for the Most High. We got to be ready for his son, Yahashua, when he returns. Okay. Um, that's, hey, that's the message for the day. Um, I know it's heavy and uh, I know it's not easily entreated, or, you know, as the word would say. But uh, it's important. It's important today because it's easy to get caught up in them conflicts easy to get caught up in the wave of fear of today you know of the the, care, the cares of this world it's so easy to do and we are so easily entertained we seek to be entertained versus developing and growing and building right instead of focusing on building service in our families serving the most high god um making sure we in good health instead of doing the things that are really important we get caught up on social media and people arguing and the news, this opinion or that opinion, what's going on with coronavirus, what's going on with Afghanistan, what's going on with this or that. We get so carried away and caught up in one scenario, one conflict, one debate to another that we forget to serve the most high God. We forget to serve our own families. We forget to do what's most important. So I'm telling you today, forsake all that trash. Forsake it all. Yeah, I know it impacts your life. Yep, I know these things are scary. I understand that. Yahashua said, be not troubled. These things shall come, right? So I'm saying forsake all that stuff. Cast it away. Ask him, what are you supposed to be creating? What am I supposed to be doing? God, what did you put me here for? And let me do that. Let me be found doing that. And if you don't come, in my generation, in my lifetime, oh man, praise God for that. Praise God for that too. I've been preparing to serve you in the kingdom of heaven anyway. Get on your post, people. Stay on your job. And uh, I pray I pray blessings and peace on, on everybody. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And uh, hey, from one to another, each one teach one, we can make this place a better place. And we can improve our families. You know, Heavenly Father, holy is your name, and our your will is done, Father. And thank you for your will. I pray your people hear your word, that they get on their post, that they do their job, and that they do your will. And that is not our own wills, Father, that we do and then pray for you to bless it, but that we actually seek and hear your voice and what we are supposed to do. And we follow that to a T. May we pay attention to what season it is, Father. We don't want to be like the hypocrite religious leaders in Jesus' time. We want to know what season it is spiritually in your word so that we can behave accordingly. You gave us explicit instructions. And as we seek to follow your instruction, Father, I pray that you bless our efforts move all obstacles out of the way and when the trial comes may we see him and pass him with flying colors knowing that you'll take care of us father keep your people in your scripture in your word and in your spirit it's in jesus christ heavenly name we pray amen all right well that's matthew 24 hope y'all got it got it good <laughs> peace people much love man and i'll see y'all on the next one